Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and here we are presenting the handover of the V-Line 540 SE, which is a 2022 model. So as we start the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, you've got your fridge vents here, which you do have fridge covers for, so when it gets to the winter months, uh, back end of October, start of November, you want to start putting your fridge vent covers on just to protect the back of your fridge and then once it starts to get warmer weather such as March, April time take them off because if you were to leave them on when it's warm the fridge won't be able to cool itself down quick enough but you can use them in the winter with the fridge vents on as it's cold below you've got two taps so you've got one which is blue fresh water drain tap so if you've taken on any contaminated water, you've taken a, you want to drain down for the winter or you are just leaving the van for a couple of weeks and don't want the water to go stagnant, you just open up and this will drain off the fresh water. The grey one next to it is your dirty water. So this is any water that you have used, such as anything you've drained down the sink, shower water, hand basin water, dishes water, all goes into here. And on the way out of the site, you would go over the motorhome service bay and you would just open it up and you would allow this to drain out. It's very important in the winter that these both two are open and drained as you wouldn't want the water to freeze in the tanks or the pipework to crack and split underneath with the frost. Cassette toilet, so on the keys, you do have one habitation key which is this one here, which does this cassette toilet. So you would push the two buttons in. Then you wanna make sure that the blade on the toilet is in the closed position. If it was open, you'd be lifting this handle and the cassette wouldn't come out like so. So what we need to do is, I'll just go and open that quickly. Once it's closed, you'll be able to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle. You've got a handle there so you can drag it to the waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside your toilet block. You'd remove the cap, so make it look like that. Press the button, which just allows a bit of air in, gives it a consistent flow, stops it from glugging and tip out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so this is when you put some water in and give it a final rinse. And then using the cap, if you're using the liquid, the cap, the grey cap, takes 120 ml of liquid, if either the blue or the green. One cap into there, and it's good to go back into the motorhome. If you're using the tablet foam, you can either put a pint of water in now, or you can push it in empty. Open the blade, flush a pint of water down, followed by a tablet in the cellophane sachet of either the blue or the green tablets. And then the cassette's good to use until it needs changed again. As the V-Line range come with a 25 litre LPG underslung tank, this is your filling point there. So you'd go to your local LPG forecourt. It's a bayonet fitting, connect on, turn the front of the nozzle of the filler, Pull the trigger back and then on the display there's a button that you push and hold until your tank was full. And a 25 litre tank will take about 16 pounds worth of LPG and this is far easier to find on the continent than a bottle if you were to go abroad. But you can get an app on your phone where you can find your local LPG centre and then just fill it there and it lasts for a good time. A lot longer than a bottle. At the back you do have your mains connection point so connect the vehicle up get your hookah blade you get a hookah blade with the vans 25 meter brand new lift it up slide it on hook the motorhome up first then walk to your site or at home so you're not walking around with a live lead and then the vehicle is hooked up to mains 240 volts so all your three pin plugs and main appliances will work on board Coming to the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light and reversing camera just below.
and then on the passenger side you've got your fresh water intake so on the other side you drain it off by the blue tap this is how you put it in so what you need to do is you need to go and buy yourself a hose pipe you can either buy a collapsible one which goes into a little bag or you can buy a normal hose pipe as long as it hasn't been used in the garden for anything else than water and some hose pipe ends because it's mainly just a brass tap again this is lockable with that little key hose pipe in there and then wait until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can see on the main display above the door which i'll show you when we're inside the vehicle at the front you've got your diesel which opens with the main ignition key this is the spare you do get a central locking key as well and this will open the diesel and then because it's a Euro 6 compliant engine, it's got Ad Blue. So the Ad Blue tank on it, Fiat Ducato, is 19 litres. When it indicates it needs it, just top it up as soon as you, as you can. And what you can do is, you can either buy it on the pump, like the R Artix and the HGVs, or you can buy it in the drums from your local car factors and top it up. But if you didn't top it up, it would go into limp mode if it got halfway, and if it gone completely dry van blue you would need fate assist to come and top it up and restart your van through a diagnostic machine you've got your tyre pressures here so five and a half bar which is 79.5 psi all round bonnet release engine battery is underneath the floor and then you've got your toolkit there, which has got a jacknet brace and a torn eye in there. So if we'll have a look underneath the bonnet quickly. You've got all your liquids to the left hand side to screen wash. Lifting this panel off, you can fill your coolant, brake fluid, engine oil. Your dipstick is digital, so it's through the instrument cluster in the cab which i'll show you at the end of the video how to check your oil level you've got your paint code so 611 for the grigio aluminium and negative for an earth and a positive behind the headlight so if the cover was down all you do is put the key in lift it up and there's your positive weight plate so this is a secondary stage conversion weight plate this is what you go off so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight if you were to put a tow bar on your train weight so that's the motorhome whatever you're towing can't exceed six ton and you've got your front and back axle weights so once inside the vehicle above the sliding habitation door you've got the main 12 volt control panel so if you're hooked up you'll have 240 volt if you're not you'll just have whatever is in your 12 volt leisure battery Starting at the top on the left hand side, you've got the master switch. So this turns on the motorhome, either 12 volt or 240. And below, you've got the main switch for your light. So you've got to have this on, and then they all are individually switched around the motorhome. At the bottom, you've got your pump. So turn this on if you've got enough water in the tank. If you've got no water in the tank, don't put the pump on, as this can burn the element out. Got your awning light on the top right hand corner so this is the light on the outside of the vehicle and then you can view your levels here so starting off from the front of the panel so we'll go through the menu so it'll say sergeant ec363 press again it'll tell you your leisure battery has 13.5 volts in and is charging Obviously take the hook about to get a true reading of the batteries. Click again, it'll tell you what your vehicle battery is like. 12.3. You've got your fresh water which is 100% so then you can turn your pump on because you've got water on board. And obviously your waste is zero. Then you can change the time. Going further in but first of all you've got your select battery. Battery equals leisure. You always want the leisure battery to be used on the motorhome side and never the vehicle battery so always make sure it says leisure click again and you've got your internal humidity and temperature you can adjust the time 
when the clocks go back and forth. Put your entrance lights here. Across from the control panel is your wheel heat air heating and hot water controls. So you just need to move your hand over them and they will come into life. You've got your heating this side. So starting off, first you've got a little picture of a snowflake. This is a frost start, five degrees. And if you go plus, you've got nighttime mode, which looks like a moon, which is 16 degrees. And then you can press it all the way until it goes to the max, which is 30 degrees. You'll notice you've got gas and electric here. So for gas, you'd press it and it'll go blue, which means standby, give it 30 seconds and it'll go to orange, which means it's operating. And then you've got three dots above the electricity symbol here. So you've got, you press it, it'll go up in dots. So one dot is 750 watt. Two dots is 1500 watts and three dots being the maximum on electric is three kilowatts and that's the same for the hot water so you've got the gas and electric but here you've got 40 degrees of heat in your water or full being 60 degrees should you get a warning triangle or an exclamation mark like this one's got you would press and hold the reset buttons on the below on both of them so which one has failed you press and hold for three seconds and it will clear the fault but always make sure that you've turned the heating off first so turn it all off so knock all the energy source off knock the temperature down wait until the fans fall silent before you turn off the main 12 volt control panel and you'll notice there's no fan speed so you can't adjust the fan speed it all reacts on the temperature so obviously if the vehicle is really cold and you've got the heating at 30 degrees being the max you'll hear the fans a lot louder than if the vehicle was already at 20 degrees and you were trying to get it up to 30 degrees the fans will be a little bit quieter and it will heat the vehicle so this is how the fans react to the temperature in the kitchen area on the V-Line 540, you've got three gas burner rings and then you do have a grill and an oven below and above it you have an 800 watt Russell Hobbs microwave so this will only work when you're on hook up. Once you've used the hob, if you allow the hob tops to go cool so that you can put your hand on before you put the cooker hood down because if you put the cooker hood down when it's too hot, there is a risk that you can shatter this cooker hood. Three pin plug, which will only work when hooked up again for your kettle or your toaster in the kitchen area. As long as you've got your pump on, you'll get pressurized water. Should the pump not be on, you'll just get whatever's left in the lines. Underneath the oven, you'll find your gas taps. So should you want to isolate any appliances, you can turn your gas taps off there. But these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. You've got your water pump and you've got some storage. Storage underneath, turn the turnbuckle and you've got a handy cutlery drawer. The little rocker switch does the lights below the cabinet. And then if you push here, this flap will work top extension. For when you're cooking, you can put your chopping board on there. Handy three pin plug as well. And then to drop this down, what you'd need to do is just pull the rails away from the worktop and this will come down. Across from the kitchen 
you do have your Dometic fridge so it works on three sources so you turn on and off here press and hold to turn back on you've got the main plug which is 240 when hooked up so if you're pre-chilling it at home or you're on site you would use this as you wouldn't want to waste your gas you'd press gas if you are while camping and you had no other source available once you've got gas on board this will work and then you've got the battery setting which will fail again because the engine's not running and that's a feed from the engine alternator not the leisure battery which keeps the fridge at the same temperature it was when departing so if you're lucky enough to keep this at home the day or two before charge your leisure battery but also put your fridge on the day before you go away pop your shopping in probably the night before allow it to chill and then you can put on the battery setting when you travel no matter how long you travel your shopping should stay at the same temperature it was when departing so it'll get no cooler but it'll get no warmer it'll act like a giant cool box and then when you arrive back on site you can either go on a gas if you're wild camping or mains electric or if you're traveling from site to site in between you'd use the battery setting as well temperature full temperature when pre-chilling before you put your shopping in then you'll probably just want to turn it down to three or four being the max because if you've got it on full it can sometimes freeze your shopping and then finally with the fridge when you finished with the van for the season or a couple of months so you're just not using it you always want to make sure that you clean your fridge out and then the last thing you want to do is trap that clean air in the fridge by shutting the door so on the the side of the light there's a little toggle press these two pins come out and then if you shut the door now the door's not shut because it's loose so it'll allow air circulation in and out the top of the rubber seal to stop mold and bacteria growing in the fridge above the fridge is the location of your wardrobe so this is where you'll find your hanging rail for your wardrobe your fire extinguisher and your leg for your freestanding table at the back so it's got the leg there which is the pole and the top behind the driver's seat and that would go on the floor in the back lounge of the vehicle so across from the toilet you have your washroom so combined shower toilet area so to operate the toilet make sure that it pumps on and if you press the blue button by the fedfed logo it will give you a fresh water flush for your system flush the toilet first to lubricate the seal on the blade and then you want to open the blade which is this grey lever here so slide it to the right you can now use the toilet once you've used the toilet flush after use if you're going to use any pink spray put it in a bottle diluted in a spray bottle spray the bowl as there's nowhere for this to go like on a caravan it has a header tank motorhomes don't so spray the bowl it'll do the same job then flush and then if you slide the grey lever back to the left this shuts the blade and then if you ever need to get the cassette out when that's shut you'll be able to get it out should it be open you'll not be able to when the cassette indicates it's full red light will come on underneath the diagram of the cassette in the top left hand corner so we've got your sink so when using it so once you fill the sink if you always be careful when draining it down because it's got to go into a reservoir below if you've filled it too full don't just tip it up because it'll flood the bathroom slowly does it until you can clip the sink into place above pushing the mirrored doors you do have your toilet cabinet and then you've got your shower head when winterizing, if you unscrew this shower head from the hose and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray with all the taps open throughout the motorhome, especially this mixer, because any water could coil up and freeze in here. And you've got a shower curtain which just clips on the press studs to stop the toilet from getting wet, which has a handy tie back there, plastic tie back where you would feed the curtain in to stop it from banging about when traveling. And you'll notice on the door you've got a towel rail towel rail and you can hang your coats in there should they've been wet if you've been out walking 
Underneath the bench seat at the back on the driver side of the vehicle, you've got your EC176 power supply unit. So you've got a 12 volt DC shutdown button here, which is a battery isolation switch. So if you, you can turn this off in the winter and it'll stop any power drains. But please take in mind that some of these buttons also do turn the head unit off through the cab if it's being wired that way for the reversing camera so if you're struggling to get the reversing camera or the radio to work and you've turned this off you then know what you've done and you need to just come and pop the button on for this to work all your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to carry some spares with you just in case one does blow a fuse you can replenish the fuse and it'll tell you what the fuse amperage is and what fuse does what on the diagram here and then you do have your RCD which is your main trip tester the same as at home and your MCB so should mains power have tripped the vehicle out you can try here before you try your main site. Further back you've got your boiler drain down tap so on your wheel boiler it's very important in the winter that you drain it down so you would open the fresh and the waste outside open all the taps within the motor home remove your shower head from your shower hose just to allow the hose to lie in the tray to stop any water from coiling up in there and freezing so what you need to do is when it's across the vehicle it's holding water point it to the back and what that will do is it'll allow the 10 litres of water to drain out directly out underneath the chassis so point it to the back leave it like that when the vehicle is stood up and not being used to stop the water from freezing when you come to reuse the vehicle shut the tap so across the vehicle shut the waste and the fresh outside, show all your taps within the inside of the vehicle, fill it up with water with a hose pipe from the house or on site if you're going to do it. Go at the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatic cold water, it should pressurise itself fine. Go at the hot side, it'll cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises until you get a free flow from the hot side of the tap of water this is when you know that your system is primed and then you would continue to heat the water by turning the, the water heater on to test the water becomes hot but don't be alarmed if it coughs sputters it's doing its cycle it's pushing the air out the boiler through the taps until the water hits the top as this holds 10 litres of water you've also got a few spur here for the boiler so this needs to be turned on enable in the control above the door to heat the hot water on electric. On the opposite bunk, you've got your leisure battery here. So your leisure battery lives in the battery box. And you've got your 20 amp main battery fuse. So if you're really struggling to get power, check that you haven't blown your 12 volt battery fuse. But as standard, they come with one battery. Some people opt to get two batteries. One fully charged leisure battery should last you three days if you use it correctly while camping. And then above, you've got these bars. So if you want to make the beds, which you probably will, you need to lift these up and put the bars in like so. Put the other bar in at the back. Putting the bars in, it'll give it extra support. So you would pop the bar in there and slide these out and then what we'll do is we'll put the cushions on and we'll come back to you and show you how to make the bed with the cushions but using the backrests you'd put them in the middle it's pretty as simple as that and using the backrests in the middle you've got your double bed across the vehicle you may want to turn the infill cushions either way as, round, as well just to get a flatter surface to sleep on but that will give you your double bed at the back you've also got storage underneath here and here that's your boiler but you've got a bit on the top there it is a bit approached by the fuse spur and the top of the boiler but you can get little bits and pieces on the top there Tobberate your windows so you just release the levers Press the button in on this one, slide it out, turn the turnbuckles to keep the window out, you've got a blackout blind and a fly screen, they'll meet in the middle, 
So just push the clip down to depart the two. Release to bring the window in. Always make sure that your windows are securely shut before travel. Be very careful with this window because the sliding door can rip it off if it's open. So get into a habit of just not simply opening that window or making sure that you don't come in the sliding door when that window is open and use the back doors. Above you've got the skylight so you press the button in and slide this down or you can slide it into the two channels there which will keep the window in play. And you've got a blackout, a fly screen for when in use and a blackout blind for on an evening so that you're not getting daylight when you're sleeping below. But like I say, skylights and windows must be shut before you travel off. So make sure that you put this as part of your checklist. Top right your telly, obviously turn it on. There is a master button down here, so make sure that you've turned that on so that it'll come on to standby and then you can turn the telly on by using the remote. You press AQT with this button here, so press and hold. And what you'll get is... If you press and hold AQT, it'll start to do an auto-tune and find as many channels as it can in your area. So you'll have to do this every time you move site. If you're struggling to get a signal, above you've got a tele booster, so you can boost the signal, or if it's too strong and the picture's pixelating, then it's, you just need to turn it down until you get that perfect picture. In this one, you've got your solar panel battery select, so it tells you that it's off in the middle. Number one is the vehicle battery, and number two is the leisure battery and that's your 100 watt solar panel that's on the roof so depending on what battery you wanted to go to you were just determined on this switch so if it's sitting around not in storage or on the drive you may want it to go to the vehicle battery if you're using it you may want it to go to the leisure battery but it's up to you where you direct the charge from the solar panel to each battery now in the cab which is based on the all new Fiat Series 8, so it gets benefits from lighter steering. All your controls are on the front of the steering wheel now. And you get a new digital dashboard. So starting off, on the right hand side you've got your handbrake. And then on the doors you've got your driver and passenger electric windows and mirror adjustments. So you can adjust both mirrors. So using the joystick you pick which mirror you want to adjust. The bottom one being the blind spot also located down to the right hand side in the corner of the dash is your gas 8 level indicator so at the moment we've got no gas on board because this is the demonstration vehicle what we do is we'll gas all vehicles going out so when you pick the vehicle up it will have a full tank of gas but it would determine by green lights that it was full and that's your 25 litre gas tank You've got your eco button here so you can put eco on if you want to save a bit of fuel but normally it does well on fuel anyway headlight adjustment rear fog lights and then you can turn off your auto stop start You've got your wipers your lights and your indicators to black the driver and passenger windows out you just slide bring these up and then you want to slide this clip into here and it'll just sit there and the same on the windscreen you just pull it up as it's a pull up lines you just want to pull it up bit of adjustment there and that's how the blind goes and then that will just slide down on the steering wheel you do have your cruise control which is this button here and it'll say cruise ready and then what you can do is you can go up and down and set the cruise when you're driving speed up slow down cancel without touching the brake and resume to the last speed set or you can go to the limiter and you can set the limiter which is in the bottom it'll say LIM LIM and it'll say 
25 miles per hour just press to keep going up on this side you've got your voice command answer and decline a call and then you can go through the screen there so it'll say instant info and it'll give you a range and your mpg which is on number one go to number two and it, it'll give you your instant miles per gallon so that'll tell you when you're driving how good you're getting to the gallon but it's not your combined it's just what you're doing at the moment so whether you're very light on the accelerator and when you accelerate it'll drop down to then average out three is vehicle information so that's when you can use the scroll and you can scroll through it from left to right so it'll tell you oil level as it's digital and there isn't a dipstick underneath the bonnet it'll tell you oil temperature It'll tell you oil life. It'll tell you battery voltage of the engine battery. It'll tell you add blue level. So when it starts getting down there, it'll give you a warning to top up with add blue. And it'll tell you service mileage. Obviously, this is on a Fiat Ducato, so always go off your manufacturer's warranty. So that would be Auto Trail now. So they do advise that every year every first year you get an oil and filter because you'll not do the mileage and every second year you get a major service and it would go like that through the vehicle's life to keep the service up to date going to four it'll tell you if there's any alerts so this would be when it would tell you to top of that blue if your fuel was low and various other bits and pieces and then number five you can look into the settings such as your door locks your lights your date and time which is all explained in the owner's handbook Fuel gauge is on the bottom of the speedo and on the rev count you've got your temperature gauge of the engine. Six speed manual gearbox with lift into reverse which will bring on the reverse camera on the V-line as this one's fitted with a reverse camera like some other models. You've got your heated mirrors, hazards, this locks the doors including all the back doors as the van conversion habitation door will get locked ESC disconnected so if you're struggling to get off a pitch you can turn your traction control off to get out give it a bit more welly USB, USB-C and standard USB and 12 volt temperature on the outside ring fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work and then on this one you've got your Distribution so where you want the air to go to, face, feet or screen and whether you're bringing fresh air in or recirculating air within the vehicle. You've got your two USBs there for the head unit. Turning the head unit on by just pressing and holding and turn it off via there. You've got your navigation, obviously this is the demonstrator van so it doesn't have a GPS card but all of ours will have so when you collect it we'll go through the navigation together but that would go in the top the, the map card you've got radio which is FM AM but normally you'd use DAB if you're struggling to get the DAB you can swap to FM press press list list all the stations you can go into each folder and pick your channel and then press preset and you can save up to six of your favorite channels Going back to home, which is on the shortcuts, so you've got shortcuts, home, nav, cam, dab, ALT, and Bluetooth. Next one along on the home screen is the Bluetooth. So it's searching at the minute, you want to go on your phone, go into Bluetooth, and start searching as well. It'll come up with your phone here, so it'll say Callum's iPhone, and you just press pair. It'll come up on your iPhone or your device that XSense want to pair with you, you'd press pair. Make sure the pins match. Then it'll come up and say, would you allow your phone book to be downloaded? Press allow and it'll download all your contacts so you can get keypad contacts, your last call log. And then if you're using Bluetooth audio, you'd press music here and it'll download, it'll allow you to stream your music from your phone to your head unit through your cab. Bluetooth 
or should I say USB with the USBs in the top glove box which will work iPod and Android link you can go to the camera and when driving forward no matter if you're in first or you're in sixth the camera will come on and act as a rear view camera and then you've got your other settings such as your setup if you need to have a look in there but what you can do is on your handbook it will go through all your settings should the head unit ever become glitchy this is a XF270 you can download a, an update onto a memory stick pop the memory stick into the USB slot go into setup go into others and you can install software and you would just press tick and it'll install the new software off the USB and update the head unit pulling this but you've got to be quite hard with it because it is plastic and then you've got to leave on the side release you can put your phone in there your iPad your sat nav if you're going to use a different sat nav you can put that in there or you've got a paper clip on the top 